Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much, Cantor Bayer, for that beautiful introductory melody. Welcome to the 25th annual JCRC St. Patrick's Day event. I'm wearing green. Oh, I've been told by my colleagues that that's the wrong holiday. Welcome to our annual Multicultural Freedom Seder, everybody. We're so grateful to all of you from all faiths, many, many ethnic groups for joining us. My name is Ty Gregory. I'm the newish executive director of the Jewish Community Relations Council, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, this is a long-standing tradition. We were so disappointed to have to cancel it last year because of the pandemic, but we're so grateful that we have the capacity in these new technologies to bring us together once more. So before I dive in and share a, a couple remarks, uh, I need to give some shout outs this evening. I want to thank a handful of elected officials who aren't reading but are with us this evening, Senator Josh Becker, Senator Ben Allen, Supervisor Myrna Melger from the San Francisco County Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Keith Carson from Alameda County, Council Member Rachel Kurtz from San Rafael, thank you for joining us. And to our sponsors, organizations and individuals, the American Jewish Committee, Bechol Shon, Catholic Charities, Central Valley Holocaust Educators Network, Congregation Beth Jacob, Congregation Shul Shofar, the Interfaith Council of Alameda County, the Interfaith Council of Contra Costa County, Jake Corps of Rossmore, the JCC of the East Bay, the JCC of San Francisco, JC JCF, uh, an endowment fund, the Jews of Color Field Building Initiative, Kedem Congregation from Palo Alto, the Oshman Family JCC, Pacifica Institute, Peninsula JCC, Peninsula Multi-Faith Coalition, Temple Beth Abraham, San Francisco Interfaith Council, the YMC of San Francisco, Howard and Wendy Kleckner, Jason Pellegrini, Neil and Adrian Tuck, if you know the song, uh, where the sheep, the goat, the dog, the cat, I, I did it kind of in one breath. Uh, to those of you that don't know it, we might get to that later. But I want to thank all of our generous sponsors, community partners, for joining us and being a part of this event this evening. So we've been talking a lot about a plague for the past year, and uh, we know a lot about 10 plagues during this particular holiday. Um, but I want to talk about three more plagues besides COVID that just because we end this pandemic, we will not be free from, that we hope you will join JCRC and our diverse community in fighting and ridding from our society. The first is the plague of hate. We've had a lot of conversations about racial injustice and inequity in this country. And I wanna focus on the anti-Asian Pacific Islander hate that we've been experiencing over the past few months. All of us must stand with our brothers and sisters in the API community. It's alarming and frightening to see what's happening and our Jewish community knows how it feels to be scapegoated, scapegoated for being more loyal to a foreign entity, scapegoated as a false model minority, which we know is a myth that gets weaponized against our community, like the Asian Pacific Islander community. JCRC looks forward to playing a leadership role in fighting anti-API hate. And we're proud that in the state of California, the Jewish Legislative Caucus and the Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus have been putting together a robust package of anti-hate legislation that we at JCRC, and we hope that all of you will join us in championing so that we can fight the scourge of hate and this plague. The second plague that we need to root out is the plague of invisibility. Many of you know that we have been fighting for a fair and inclusive model ethnic studies curriculum in the state of California. For hundreds of years in our history and social studies classrooms, textbooks about American history and American culture have been written from a majority perspective. Ethnic studies rights the wrong by allowing marginalized communities, including the Jewish community, of telling our own story, our own history, our own diversity. And we know that this isn't just about hearing the dog whistles of hate, in our case, the dog whistles of anti-Semitism. It's also about academic performance. We know that marginalized students, and particularly students of color who go through ethnic studies perform better academically in school. So we need to fight inequity by pushing for ethnic studies that does right by communities of color and does right by the Jewish community. We've proposed two lesson plans that we hope are adopted on Thursday at the state school board vote. One focused on Jews in the Middle East and North Africa, and the other focused on intersectional Jewish identity and the diversity of the American Jewish experience. But we wanna lift up those four core communities that founded the ethnic studies movement the Asian Pacific Islander community, the African American community, the Latino community, and the indigenous peoples community. Together, we can move this forward by allowing communities to write their own stories and rid us of the plague of invisibility. The last plague I wanna call everyone to join me in ridding of is the plague of isolation. 
we've all been isolated physically from each other for well over a year, and we look forward to that coming to a close in the near future. But we are also isolated as communities. So often we feel like we are alone and that the bubbles around us are impermeable. And for those that think that doing community relations work and coming together like this is old school, let, I have some news for you. It's actually quite radical. What's, new school, what's old school right now is people sticking to their corner, only talking to themselves, reinforcing specific viewpoints. We need to get out of our comfort zones. We need to talk with people who disagree with us. That's the only way we make change. I came to JCRC from the LGBT movement, and the main thing that I learned from that experience there was that you can't make change and change hearts and minds only by talking amongst yourselves. We have to be brave enough to talk to people who disagree with us. We can't only turn inwards as a community, as a city, as a region, as a country. We have to have the courage to turn outwards as a community. There we can rid this plague of isolation by coming together and ensuring that marginalized communities of all stripes are fully integrated into the fabric of Bay Area civic life. I want to turn now to invite all of you to join us on April 13th, where we'll talk more about these issues at JCRC's annual gala, the behind the scenes event on April 13th. We're going to be honoring the leaders of Project Level, Daniel Banks and Big Rich Bougere. We're going to be honoring Craig Newmark of Newmark Philanthropies and our friends Marty Shanker and Sue Diamond for their leadership. And it'll be a great opportunity to come together. And uh, I think one of my colleagues will pay some more information about that. But turning back to the event this evening, we have a great program in store for you. We're so grateful for Rabbis Singer and Graf for leading the service this evening. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to California's new senator, Alex Padilla. Hello, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to speak during the JCRC's 25th annual Multicultural Passover Freedom Seder. While the COVID-19 pandemic doesn't allow us to be physically together this year, it's still important for communities to connect and reflect on our common values. It is not lost on me that I, the first Latino Senator from the state of California, was sworn in alongside the first Jewish and the first black senators from the state of Georgia, both of whom will be my partners in the fight for social justice. Our swearing in was a powerful reminder that even through an incredibly difficult year, our nation's march towards justice and equality continues. Tonight, as we gather for Passover and read the story of the Exodus from Egypt, we reflect on the ongoing struggle for freedom facing so many of our neighbors. We also recognize that these struggles are all connected. The fight against anti-Semitism, racism, and all forms of hate have common causes that must be addressed together. You know, my parents arrived in the United States in the 1960s in search of a better life. They worked hard for decades so that my sister, my brother, and I could have a better life. I carry my parents' story close to my heart as we fight for immigration reform in a way that respects and protects those who have come to America and have contributed so much to our communities and to our country. In 2018, I was honored to be the keynote speaker for JCRC's Waging Democracy Forum, when we discussed our statewide efforts to support voters and increase civic participation. I'm proud to report that despite the COVID-19 pandemic, California set records for voter registration and turnout in 2020. These records would not have been possible without the partnership of community groups throughout the state to prepare Californians to vote early and vote by mail. Finally, Passover occurs during the spring to remind us that this is a time of renewal. So today, I join with you as we rededicate ourselves to the fight for equality and justice. I'm thankful for JCRC's support in the fight for immigrant rights and to protect our democratic institutions. Next year, I hope we can gather for an in-person Seder. To all those celebrating, happy Passover and Chag Sameach. Thank you. Hello, everybody. 
I'm delighted to be here with you. I'm Rabbi Jessica Graff. And there we go. I'm Rabbi Jessica Graff. Tonight, we acknowledge how precious our freedoms are. And we remember the actions of brave people who came before us, who helped us to gain those freedoms. Tonight, especially, we acknowledge and celebrate our responsibility to protect those freedoms and to ensure freedoms for all of our neighbors and for all peoples. It is my privilege to introduce you to Rabbi Jonathan Singer, my co-host for the evening. And I'd like to ask you, Rabbi Singer, what is your favorite thing about Passover? What do you love about this holiday celebrating freedom? I, I love that we eat different foods and we remind ourselves, we experience uh, and try to have, have a connection to both the, the suffering of the, the uh, oppressed and slaves, and then have that vision of freedom that we can all work together to be better. And I like that I get to drink some good wine, which I hope you'll do tonight if you're a wine drinker. We're grateful to Covenant Wines for providing some wine for us and for telling the story and just enjoying. And there's Rabbi Graf, you know, there's a, a, a teaching that we recline. So I was wondering if we could have everybody stretch for a moment and do a shoulder roll. This is California Jewry. Come on, everybody. And, and, and welcome all of you that we're all here together from such great diversity. So I'm just glad to be here. Me too. And now I'm honored to introduce our first reader, president of the Community College of San Francisco Board of Trustees, Chanel Williams. Wonderful. Good evening, everyone. As we celebrate the Bay Area's legacy, we are reminded that the region continues to be a work in progress, built by immigrants and migrants at every turn, from the gold rush to the building of the railroad, through wars, liberation movements, the AIDS crisis, and the dot-com boom. The story of Bay Area is one of rapid spurts of growth. Thank you, everyone. To continue our reading, please welcome Erica Baines, Chairperson of the Interfaith Council of Contra Costa County. It's a story of new industries and movements that brought new waves of people, all seeking the better life and opportunities that the Bay Area, more than most places, has always represented. Change and growth are part of what make the Bay Area a remarkable region, and we, its residents, will keep step with that change to ensure that it remains unique. To finish our reading, we are joined by San Francisco District Attorney Chessa Boudin, who will read a quote by former San Francisco public defender Jeff Adachi. When you look at the history of this country, Race has always been part of law from the very beginning. Whether you start with slavery, Jim Crow laws, exclusion of Chinese, incarceration of my parents and grandparents and other Japanese Americans, the genocide of over 100 million Native Americans, the use of Latinos as slave labor. While you don't want to dwell in the pain and sadness, it is that history of struggle that in a very unique way has united people, not only now, but from the beginning of time, to work together and to effectuate social change. Pastor Koch, thank you. So Seder also means order, that we go in a certain order and we tell, uh, uh, we know in our heads how to proceed. And we use a book called the Haggadah, you see one on the screen, but before the times where there were books, uh, people just knew the order by heart and they created an order that gave them agency that each person should be able to lead a Seder. It's not dependent upon rabbis, but every person can lead the Seder. And that makes me think that every one of us can work together to bring freedom and change and justice and hope to this country so much in need of it. So I thought it'd be nice for us to chant the, 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 the order here, the Kaddish Urchatz, and you don't want me to do it, so I hope we can spotlight Jonathan Bear and he can lead us, and you can sing from home if you know it. Kaddish Urchatz 
kahar pahas yachatz, magihir rochza, mohotzi matza, maror korech, shuchan orech, zafun barech, ha-halel nirza. So we have the uh, order, and one of them included the symbols of the Seder. And at every Seder, you'll have a Seder plate. It has these ancient symbols. Some of them you'll hear about in a few moments represent the springtime, like the egg uh, and the uh, karpas, the parsley. Some of them represent the suffering, the struggles, uh, the haros, it's an apple kind of wine mix, or the maror. I got them backwards, <laughs> the bitter herbs, and uh, even a shank bone that they would use to put the blood around the lint of the uh, doors seeking to go free. I live in a vegetarian household, so we use a beet in, instead of, 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 a, of a shank bone itself. And so that order includes also the kindling of holiday candles. It's my honor to invite Marin Supervisor Damone Connolly to introduce that uh, ritual. Thank you. Good evening. As we light these candles, we think of the journeys our ancestors took as people from a variety of backgrounds and cultures. We marvel that we have all come together today to celebrate the Bay Area's pluralistic society as we have experienced freedom here in our own way. We commit ourselves to keep the flame of justice alive, to sustain our communities. We pray that the candle's brightness and warmth symbolize hope, the coming of redemption for oppressed people everywhere, and guide us in taking action to ensure freedom for everyone. Thank you. Maruch Adonai Eloheinu melech Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotam Vetsivanu Lehaligne Lehaligne Shel yom to Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of the universe, who makes us special with your commandments and teaches us to light the holiday candles. No, thank you. For the morning? Um, no. We'll continue with the Shehachianu as we thank God for giving us life and sustaining us. You'll see the words, there they are. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Shehachianu v'kiyamanu, v'higiyanu lahazman hazeh. Praise you, creator of the universe, who has brought us forth, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this season. Traditionally, we drink four cups of wine to symbolize the four times the Israelites were promised that they would be freed from slavery. Tonight, each of our four cups of wine or grape juice will be dedicated to a different community that has found a home in the Bay Area. And now to reflect on the dedication for our first cup of wine, is Dora Rose, Deputy Director of the League of Women Voters of California. Good evening, everybody. As we bless our first cup of wine, which I will hold up, we honor our commitment to democracy. We are privileged to live in a city that deeply values its government of and by the people. Here in the Bay Area, our democracy doesn't just mean majority rule, it means that the majority will not abuse the basic rights, freedom of speech, assembly, legal petition, in which every member of society is respected. It means that we value equity and inclusion, and we work to ensure that our system's truly representative of our community's diverse demographics. 
Democracy is a system that allows us to peacefully resolve our differences, hold our leaders accountable, and increase the dignity of our citizens. With this cup of wine, we honor those who continue to fight to uphold our fragile democracy as we continue to strive for greater freedom, liberty, and justice for all. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei p'ri ha'gafen. So we say to all of you out there, l'chaim, go ahead and have a, a little drink, and remember, the work for freedom, for justice, it's something to be celebrated, it's joyful, the Seder is joyful. And we honor all of those who help take us out of Egypt, wherever we find it, out of oppression, wherever we find it. It's so wonderful to have uh, Hilma Menenthes, CEO of Catholic Charities, now read this poem by Langston Hughes. Thank you, Rabbi. Democracy will not come today, this year, nor ever through compromise and fear. I have as much right as the other fellow has to stand on my two feet and own the land. I tire so of hearing people say, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Freedom is a strong seed planted in a great need. I live here too. I want freedom just as you. Wow, that is so powerful. Uh, we are grateful to all of you who lead us in this state, in this county, in the city, in the country, your work for freedom and the work that JCRC does is so essential. So as we move to the next part of our Seder, we take a symbol of uh, the springtime, this uh, carpas or parsley, and we'll be ready to dip it at, in a moment. You'll hear about that into water that's salted, that, that combined notion of the spring and yet the work we have to do together. And uh, Reverend Ken Chambers, president of the Interfaith Council of Alameda County that represents that working together, will lead us next. Thank you so much. So glad to be here with you all in honor of the Passover. Um, we dip these herbs of carpus uh, into salt water in order to mingle the fresh taste of freedom with the sad memories and tears of slavery. We do this, we become mindful of all those who still suffer under the yoke, oppression today, and the need to continue the fight for freedom. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Our, our tradition teaches that the carpas represents the herbs used around the lintel to mark the door frame with the blood, kind of like a, a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. And so as we take this symbolic hyssop, the herb, which is now, I think, known as oregano, biblical herb, we are representing that with the carpas, but we also represent the bounty and the beauty of our earth and one of the freedoms that we need to protect which is to protect our earth and to protect the environment for future generations, to protect all of us with nature and with everything that we have that continues to sustain us. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei p'ri ha'adamah. Blessed is the force of life, the strength of workers who brings forth the fruits, grains, and vegetables from our bountiful earth. And our next symbol is matzah. Matzah is the bread that the Hebrew ancestors hastily prepared as they fled from Egypt. We break this matzah in half as a reminder that although the process of redemption began with the exodus, heart remains hidden 
After dinner, we will share the afikomen so that we may savor the taste of redemption and be reminded to do our share to bring about a better world. The broken matzah. Rabbi Graf, do you like matzah? I'm one of those strange people who loves matzah. I eat it year round and buy cases of it at this time of year so that we can have matzah braai all year. You're all invited to our house <laughs> braai on Sunday mornings. I'm not a fan of matzah. And yet I need it for the seven days just to connect to that experience. I think it's so important to, to pull back for a moment. And, and, and I love the simplicity of, of the Seder. And yet we have a lot of questions and I like to ask lots of questions and the Seder is all about uh, telling the story and asking questions about why is the world like it is. Really the questions we see in the Haggadah or the discussions there starting off point because it's supposed to be about the questions we have today and how do we work for freedom today and how do we celebrate each other today. So the Seder table, it's a place for discussing without fear. It's a place where we really engage each other even if we disagree that no one leaves the table there are four uh, symbols of four cups of wine, four questions, also four children. And one of them is called the Rasha. I call them the teenager. That They're asking questions that make the parents a little bit uncomfortable. Rabbi Graf, you're going to find out more about that later in life. Let me tell you, my kids give me a hard time. <laughs> so let's hear about four questions now as we go to those. And they're sung about why is this night different? And again, Glad to have Jonathan Bear lead us in singing and sing at home, mute it, but sing at home. And um, even if you've never heard these questions before, you'll definitely catch on to the chorus that goes, which is all about this special night. This is your last chance at the course. I think you've got it by now. questions on the screen about the different foods, getting us to ask deeper questions. The reclining question, uh, you know, there's an argument that whatever your economic status on Passover, when you have the Seder, you act as if you're blessed with wealth, that freedom is an opportunity to just em embrace the best things in life and that everyone's entitled to that. So, so we recline the way actually the Romans did, uh, that this part of the Seder is probably copied off the Roman symposia. 
And then we go forward and we start to answer the questions by telling the stories. We retell that our story of past bondage each year to remind ourselves of the preciousness of this freedom, that we shouldn't take it for granted. The story begins almost 4,000 years ago when Am Yisrael faced a terrible famine, the Jewish people did, in the land of Israel. And our ancestor Jacob took his family and went down to Egypt. We were the people at the border, the children at the border of that time, trying to find a way to sustain life. We have to always remember that and think about that. So we came into Egypt. Another Pharaoh rose up who didn't remember what Joseph had done to help save Egypt at a different point in time. And he looked out upon the Israelites and said, what if they're a fifth column? That kind of racism, that's what's recorded, we think about in Haggadah. And so he begins the process of setting taskmasters over us, oppressing us, trying to stop our births, all of that. I uh, think of the Uyghurs right now in China, and we were put into heavy labor. And there arose Moshe, Rabbeinu, to challenge Pharaoh, to ask that we be free. And each time the Pharaoh says no, he wants to hold on to the economic structure of the past and not see that liberation is important for everyone. And so we get the 10 plagues until we come to the worst one, the, the killing of the firstborn. It's such a horrible, difficult part of the story. And so even though we're grateful for our freedom, we are taught to be pained by the knowledge that others suffered in the process of achieving it. And so there is a practice of taking your cup. So take your cup, everybody, and put a napkin by the side and that we lower the cup, the cup that represents joy. And we call out the plagues and we lessen them. We lower our joy because of the suffering of others. So repeat after me, I'll do the English. Blood, and you say blood, frogs, lice, flies, pestilence, Boils, boils, locusts, locust, locust, darkness, darkness, Makata Road, slaying of the firstborn. Such a hard, hard thing. So our cup is lowered. And we think uh, not just of the Jewish experience, but interestingly enough, going back to when I'm at any Seder, uh, this African American spiritual comes back to the Jewish people to really describe what it is like to be in oppression. And so let's hear this now with Jonathan. And again, sing along at home muted, but do sing along. We don't need the words for this one, but uh, I'm sure they'll come up in a second. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go Oppressed so hard they could not stand Let my people go Go down Moses Way down in Egypt land Tell old Pharaoh let my people go You need not always weep and mourn Let my people go And wear these slavery chains for long Let my people go Go down Moses And I don't know if it's possible, but I see we're not horribly behind schedule. Maybe everybody who's comfortable could just unmute for one second and just sing that last chorus that we all know together. Let's break Zoom. Go down, if you want to unmute. Moses, 
Rabbi Jessica, yeah. Great. The Israelites left Egypt at midnight in such a hurry that they did not have time to let their bread dough rise. Instead, they baked it immediately and it came out flat and hard, the first matzah. The Israelites escaped to the Sea of Reeds with the Egyptians in hot pursuit. Moses said before God, ruler of the universe, what can I do? God replied, lift up your rod. Moses lifted his rod and the waters parted and the Israelites crossed over on dry land. From the Sea of Reeds, the Israelites traveled on to Mount Sinai where God gave them the Torah. At Sinai, they entered into a covenant with God that sustains us to this day and teaches us to cherish a vision of the world free of oppression, discrimination, and suffering. In a Passover Seder, we list the elements of God's liberation of the Israelites and say that each one alone would have been enough. Dayenu, if only God had done that, it would have been enough. Ilu ilu hotzianu hotzianu me mitzrayim hotzianu me mitzrayim dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 Shabbat Natan Lanu at a Shabbat Dayenu Day Dayenu Day Dayenu Day Dayenu 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 Day Dayenu Day Dayenu Day Dayenu 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 Rabbi, you're muted. We get ready to pour our second cup. I was muted. You know, something my uh, my spouse and congregation wishes they had the capacity to do after <laughs> the Zoom experience. Go ahead and pour your second cup as we celebrate freedom and think about how to do more. And we're so honored to have Marcella White Campbell the executive director of the whole has shown lead us in the uh, introduction to this blessing. Good evening and Chag Pesach Semer. As we raise our cups, we recognize San Francisco's flourishing pluralism of which Jews have been a part since the city's founding. Our society benefits from the multiplicity of cultures, exchange of ideas 
and outward looking focus on the global stage. Pluralism is absolutely key to our shared survival as we commit to honor and respect our differences as core strengths to a thriving democracy. Praise your God, sovereign of the universe, who brings us forth the fruit of the vine. The Chaim, take a drink. You know, I was thinking about the courage that Moses had to go and speak truth to power, to go to Pharaoh. And I love that um, in this Haggadah, in this service, we now have the chance to hear other uh, leaders, more contemporary leaders, do the same. So it's to have... Um, Roberto Juan Hernandez, come forward as CEO of Kana, the Mission Food Hub, to share with us uh, some of these readings. What a blessing. Buenas noches. It's an honor to be here with you today. Where you see wrong it, or inequality or injustice, speak out. Because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. Let us never forget that government is ourselves and not an alien power over us. The ultimate rulers of our democracy are not a president and senator and congressman and government officials, but the voters of this country. We have the oldest written constitution still in force in the world. And it starts with three words, we the people. One's country is worth dying for and democracy is worth dying for because it's the most deeply honorable form of government ever devised by man. I can't read the, um, okay. Women must assume the responsibility of maintaining freedom of speech in this land. They must assume also the responsibility of the ballot through government study. Elections remind us not only of the rights, but the responsibility of citizenship in a democracy. Oh. At our seders, we hold up matzah, we eat matzah, and we think about the symbolism of this flat cracker, which reminds us where we came from. This is the bread of affliction. It reminds us of the flight from bondage when the Jews left Egypt in such a hurry that there was no time for the bread to rise. When we eat it, we remember how awful are the chains of slavery. And in the sharing of matzah, we strengthen the bonds that unite us in our quest to fight slavery today. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu al achilahat matzah. There's that commandment to eat it, Rabbi Grass. <laughs> mm, love it. <laughs> Not already I know, but I love it. Even better with chocolate on it, but it's pretty good plain too. The bitter herb stings the eyes and awakens the heart. It reminds us, the bitter herb. It reminds us how the Egyptians embitter the lives of the Jewish people. It reminds us that when there is oppression anywhere, we all taste its bitterness. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat maror. 
Blessed are you, source of salvation, who has sanctified us by the commandment to eat bitter herbs and commanded us to taste and reflect upon the bitterness of human repression and to ensure freedom from slavery for all. So friends, if we were together at this point, we'd enjoy a meal together and we'd talk about ideas. So right now we're not together, we're in Zoom land, but I want you to think about the parting of the sea. You know, just as we're going to COVID, this thing called Zoom becomes available to us just in time that we can engage like this. And we're gonna take advantage of one feature, which is to break out and to break out groups and give you the chance, even if you're eating at home a little bit, to talk about an idea and share and engage. We want you to talk about, and it'll be in the chat as well, the question is, what will it take for historically marginalized communities to feel free and safe? Something that ACRC works so much on. And in your chat, can you consider what do you and your community need for support during this time of rising hate? Or how can we stand up for our sisters and brothers who are targeted by hate? How do we show support? So they're not gonna be um, any leaders, just join in and, and make sure everyone gets a chance to talk a little bit. Um, men be allies <laughs> and pull back a little bit and let's hear each other. And we'll take about 15 minutes or so, you'll get, get departed and, and invited back in. So enjoy. So friends, welcome back. I hope you had great conversations in your breakout group. We did as well. And it's these conversations that are so important and to keep them going, to rebuild the community and break down the walls as, as COVID begins to end. Speaking of brokenness, I have here the middle matzah, the Afi Komen. And to tell us about this, this matzah we need to have to get ready to end the Seder, we have to have it for a dessert. It's my honor to invite uh, Supervisor Preston to come forward and, and be our leader. Thank you, Rabbi. The hidden piece of matzah represents the stories hidden from view, the lives of many immigrants and their families, members of the LGBT community waiting for society to accept them, and those targeted simply for who they are. Until these divided parts are made one again, our Seder cannot conclude. Reuniting the Afikoman symbolizes that it is in our power to make whole that which is broken and to work toward bringing freedom to everyone in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Preston. And so I pull out the Afikoman. Uh, you know, Rabbi Graf, I can't believe that this is dessert. And I, I'm going to leave some for you since you like matzo so much. <laughs> chocolate on it, a little toffee. It's even more delicious. Yeah, you, know, you can get the chocolate matzah. That's, that is good stuff. And we make matzah pizza. I kind of live on that for the seven days. Um, but I, You might even crave it, who knows, in July. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, uh, we get ready to pour the third cup. And it is interesting for uh, the, the Jews here that, you know, kosher wine doesn't have to be bad. And I hope you'll look at uh, uh, the Covenant wine selection that's out there. Uh, there's some really great stuff. This is not Nebu Shah's, but it's wonderful wine. Uh, or pour whatever you want. Some people think it's not Passover unless they have Manischewitz, but there are a lot of good now kosher wines out there. And we live in the Bay Area, so, you know, we can do a little bit better. So we pour that third cup and we get ready. And we uh, invite now uh, Council Member Amarantz Lee of San Mateo to come forward and read this introduction to the third cup of wine. As we raise our cup to let, let us pause to honor the ongoing efforts by people around the world who seek to sustain their democratic self-determination. From our friends and loved ones in Israel and Palestine to our fellow Americans, we continue to uphold our commitment to supporting the peaceful and democratic self-determination of all peoples. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. 
O re pri agafen. And now we reflect on the inspiring words of Harvey Milk, an LGBT activist and Jewish San Franciscan. Thank you. And as the first YMCA gay CEO in the country, I am honored to read the words of Harvey Milk. I have tasted freedom. I will not give up what I have tasted. I have a lot more to drink. For that reason, the political numbers game will not be played. I know the rules of the game now and how to play it. It's not my victory. It's yours and yours and yours. If a gay can win, it means there's hope that the system can work for all minorities if we fight. We've given them hope. And to continue, Honey Mahogany, co-founder of the Transgender Cultural District. People thought the Pope would run the country. But after six months in office, when Kennedy started to do things, people never questioned him again. If I do a good job, people won't care if I'm green or have three heads. If I turned around every time someone called me a faggot, I'd be walking backward and I don't wanna walk backward. The important thing is not that we can live on hope alone, but that life is not worth living without it. If a bullet should enter my brain, let that bullet destroy every closet door. Hope will never be silent. Wow. Wow, Hebre. So we lift the cup to Harvey Milk's memory. And for that, again, that courage to speak truth to power, these individuals who changed and helped make us a better country, help us work towards the messianic age to a time where we will accept each other and see God's presence in everybody, no, uh, no matter how they're different from us, they're all holy and that blessing. In our tradition, Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, is supposed to come and announce that moment when that transformation has happened. He's included in the Seder because the rabbis were all debated, as rabbis are wont to do. So there'd be four or five cups at the Seder. They weren't sure. And so they have the fifth cup, and they say when Elijah comes, he will answer all the questions. Well, to help answer our question, somebody who does so much to represent the state of Israel and connect with our communities, it's my honor to invite uh, the amazing and, and blessed Shlomi Kaufman, Consul General of the State of Israel, to say uh, this reading. Thank you, Rabbi, and thank you, Leith. It's great to be with you. Um, it's great to be with you tonight and celebrate together Passover. Throughout the history, the name of Eliyah has been the sound of hope. We open the door at this time to welcome Eliyah's spirit. The open door also symbolizes the door we must open for ourselves and for others who seek freedom from injustice. On this night, we welcome the prophet Eliyah and speak of ancient promise. On this night, we reclaim a tradition of dreams. On this night, we open wide door of hope. As the spirit of Eliyah enters this room in our lives, it reminds us that hope is something we are with us here and now. Hope is not feeling we wait for. It is a commitment to a future we hope to create. Eliyahu Hanavi Eliyahu Hatishbi Eliyahu 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 Agiladi Imhera Veyamenu Yahavu Elenu Imoshi and David, Eliyahu 
אליהו, אליהו, הגילה. Every we come to our fourth cup, our last cup of wine. So I'm going to fill up my last cup. I love the little in there because I think I've had enough already. But if you think, who would you want to have your last cup of wine with? I can't think of anybody better than Senator Scott Wiener, who does so much for all of us to come and introduce this final cup. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, as we raise our fourth and final cup, we recognize the resilience of what it will take for each of us to safeguard and empower the Bay Area's inclusive values. With this cup of wine, may our resilience persevere in our embrace of the vision for our city and our country. Democracy, pluralism, and self-determination cannot be sustained without advocates and activists from all sectors of society who are willing to continue the good fight, even when the going gets tough. <laughs> ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, בורא פרי הגפן. חיים. חיים, our final reader of the night will read a quote by Shirley Shizom, and it is a privilege to introduce Drew Min, the executive director of the San Francisco chapter of the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say that uh, on behalf of the Asian American Pacific Islander Public Affairs Association, we'd like to express our deepest gratitude and thanks to the Jewish community for having a friend in you. It means a lot to us, especially during these times. And now a quote from Shirley Chisholm, the first um, African-American woman to be elected to Congress. Every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of the handle of anxiety or the handle of faith. And the first battle was won, my brothers and sisters, when we fight for belief in ourselves and find that it has come to us while we are still battling. We must not allow petty things to color our lives and stimulate them into vast proportions of evil. To dwell on every slight and clutch it close to our breast and nourish it will corrode our thinking. We're on the move now, and as Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a struggle. It never has, and it never will. Wow, when we stand together, we stand with you We ask our community now, we have a closing song and then a last blessing. If you're with somebody in your, um, in your pod, in your safe place, put your arm around them. We're going to sing this song for peace. O say shalom bin Ramav. Make the holy bring peace. May we be the ones who bring peace as well. And of course, Jonathan is going to lead us in this beautiful song. Who say shalom in Roma? Who ya say shalom aleno? We are called Israel. We are called Yosvitiv. bring peace to all who inhabit the earth for all of us for all Israel for all people for all the diversity of America and let us again say amen and if our 
our curator of spotlight can bring on Rabbi Zimmerman Graf and Tyler Gregory and myself. We should all be on together right now because we want to close together. So can you take off that closing sign and put all three of us on? <laughs> there we are. Where, where's, where's, uh, where's Tyler? I'm here waving. Okay, well, put them on the main thing together, everybody. Because, uh, because man, Tyler, you are doing such great work. We are so grateful to you to do the work that you're doing. Rabbi Graf, I'm so grateful to partner with you in this work together, too, that all our congregations stand with uh, the JCRC, uh, the JCC, all of us, secular, religious, whatever. We all want a better uh, Bay Area, a better California, a better America. So let's close together. Um, with these words. And, and by the way, if you have extra uh, matzah at the end of the, your Seder, you're all done. Rabbi Graf will be glad to receive it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say these words together, uh, or else maybe I took it off the screen, so I'll, we'll say it together, the three of us. Uh, may slavery give way to freedom. May hate give way to love. May ignorance give way to wisdom. May despair give way to hope. Next year, at this time, may everyone everywhere be free. We know freedom will only come if we work for it together. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. Next year, no COVID. Yay. May <laughs> we be together next year to celebrate this beautiful JCRC Seder. Thank you so much for inviting us to be with you. It's really our privilege of our singers and mine to be with all of you tonight. Jonathan Bear, how are we closing? Well, we have a uh, a, a great song okay, that, uh, you know... Before you close, Tyler, do you want to add one more thing? I cut you off. You know, you did such a great job. I just want to thank everyone for coming again next year in person. Yes, yes. All right, Jonathan Bear, what are we doing? Uh, absolutely. We're doing... Um, well, as, as you know, we would we would end uh, exactly as Tyler Gregory just said, Vashana uh, Haba'a, together. Um and uh, we're going to end with this uh, song by Matis Yahu, a uh, formerly Hasidic Jewish uh, reggae star. And it's just a brilliant song. And I see we have the chorus up here. Um, I'll sing the, the, the verse. And there's one line uh, that I really love, which says, um, don't take me soon because I'm here for a reason. And this whole night led by um, everybody here has made me remember that I'm here for a reason. Sometimes I lay under the moon and thank God I'm breathing. And then I pray, don't take me soon. Cause I am here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown. But I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around. And here the words we have up here. All my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to see that we don't want to fight no more, there'll be no more war, and our children will play one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. all my life I've been waiting for. I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war and our children will play. One day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. Thank you everyone for joining us for the Seder. Let's join together. Uh, let's, I mean, let's celebrate next year, next year together, and let's support each other. Amen. 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 Thanks everyone. Thank you, rabbis. Appreciate you joining us. On our honor. Eat a lot of matzah, everybody. We need it. Rabbis and Tyler, I can play us out, or we can do the thing where we all unmute and wave bye bye bye. I like both of those. They're both we like, really. We like free music, John. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not free because you've inspired me to uh to, to get out there and do a lot of stuff tonight. Everybody, happy spring. 
Happy Passover, Happy Easter, Happy everything. One day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. Thank you to Jessica yes. Sterling for making this happen. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you to Jessica and Haley and everybody at the JCRC. It's not about win or lose, cause we all lose when they feed on the souls of the innocent, blood-drenched pavement. Keep on moving though the water stay raging, in this maze you can lose your way. It might drive you crazy, but don't let it phase you no way. Sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around. All my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more wars and our children will play one day. Good night, everybody.